Good evening, everyone at Praise Chapel Revival Oxnard. This is Pastor Johnny Montillo welcoming you to our Wednesday midweek service. I hope and I pray that your week has been great and blessed. And most importantly, I hope and I pray that tonight's message encourage, inspire you, and motivate you into your deeper walk with Christ. As always, before I begin tonight, I just wanted to thank the shepherd of our church, Pastor Mondo Carrillo, and his wife, Sister Veronica Carrillo, for all that they do for the body of Christ. Keep them in your daily prayers always, as they always have us in their prayers also. Before I begin tonight, let us just open up in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for this time of thankfulness, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all that you have done, all that you will do, and all that you are doing in each and every one of our lives. As we gather with family this upcoming season, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, Father God, that it be met with thankfulness, that it be met with gratitude, and most importantly, Lord Jesus Christ, that it be met, Lord Jesus Christ, with your name being declared and proclaimed throughout the whole entire world. Father God, I thank you for tonight. Holy Spirit, we yield tonight's service unto you, and I pray with expectation for a mighty move of God. And we thank you, and we give you all honor and praise. In your most glorious name, Jesus, amen and amen. Tonight, I wanted to talk to you about having that overwhelming thankfulness. As we enter into the season of Thanksgiving and we prepare, prepare, if you will, for our family gatherings that are filled with food and fellowship, love, and, and as we have retrospect on what we are thankful for, it would seem that there is no better time than to dive into the biblical principle and the virtue of thankfulness. Thankfulness is a virtue that believers should not only embrace, yet also exercise and apply daily. Each morning we rise and each time we lay ourselves to rest, we should be displaying an endless thankful attitude toward our Lord, no matter how great or even how trying our days or our nights may be. Often though, our rising in the morning is often met with dread-filled declarations such as, today's going to be terrible, or even, I hate waking up. And often as we lay ourselves to bed to rest, we often meet our laying down with anxiety and a sense of defeat from the day that just, just had taken place. Yet the biblical principle and having a sense of thankfulness as we arrive in the morning it would indicate that we arise in the morning with thankfulness, with gratitude. Rather than that dread and rather than that, that, that declaration of a terrible day, we should be waking up each and every morning with thankfulness that we have the breath of life and for the opportunities that the day may bring. And if we have a cultivated virtue of thankfulness, when we lay down to rest, we will be thinking about the goodness of the Lord and feeling a sense of victory no matter how trying the day was. Fact of the matter is we, begin, we need to begin to embrace and cultivate the virtue of thankfulness to replace all those anxieties, to replace all those dread-filled declarations. Yet truth be told, we have to ask ourselves the question, have we been walking in thankfulness always? Or have we been replacing thankfulness with bitterness, depression, or even defeat? We have to cultivate and exercise thankfulness in order to challenge defeat, depression, bitterness, and all those anxieties. Turn your Bibles, if you will, to the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. And the verses say, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So as we can see in that scripture, rejoicing, praying, and giving thanks truly go hand in hand. In fact, we are told to rejoice always. That means to be glad always, and that may seem difficult at times. And we're called to pray continually, always throughout the day, to continue to continually pray. And yet, we become so task-saturated that this becomes difficult also. And then we are called to give thanks in all things, no matter how trying, no matter how good, no matter how difficult, we are called to give thanks in all things. And this is truly impossible unless we have the Holy Spirit indwelling within us. We can't go throughout our days rejoicing always, being glad always, or even praying continually, or giving thanks in all circumstances if we don't have the Holy Spirit indwelling in us. And we have to admit that we don't rejoice always. We don't rejoice always, which means that we don't have that constant gladness. And why we don't have that constant gladness is because we don't have that godly, Holy Spirit-filled perspective that we can be glad in all things. And oftentimes we become so focused on other things that we fail to pray continually. And when this happens, it leads to us not being thankful in every circumstance and in every difficulty. 
The fact of the matter is, we have to be glad always. We have to have communication with God always through prayer. And we have to cultivate a thankfulness that says that no matter how difficult, no matter how bad things may be, we can rejoice and give thanks in all circumstances. See, it truly requires a Holy Spirit-filled perspective change. And what this means is that when the problems are many, we remain glad. And even when the troubles pile up, we don't lose communication with the Lord. And no matter how much the circumstances may be, we remain thankful. The scripture doesn't tell us to give thanks for things granted or blessings or even favor, but rather to remain thankful in whatever circumstances may arise. See, true thankfulness is thanking the Lord that he's still there no matter what is going on. And we should always be thankful for that. The truth is, though, When troubles arise, we often fail to display thankfulness and we rather display resentment or disgruntlement or or even bitterness when circumstances arise. And this is something we truly need to challenge. Here's the fact of the matter. A common question we often ask is, what is God's will for me? What is God's design for me? What does God desire for me, my family, and from everyone in the body of Christ? Well, the answer is right there in the scripture to rejoice, pray, and give thanks. In fact, the scripture says in verse 18, if you will, to give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. God's will for us, we often ask that question, what's your will for me? What's your destiny for me, God? It's to give thanks in all circumstances, to give him thanks no matter what we are going through. Psalm 118, 119, rather, verse 62 says this, At midnight, I'd rise to give you thanks for your righteous laws. Quite frankly, it's often hard for us to give thanks to the Lord for the statutes that he he requires of us, the, the statutes that he requires us to be good ambassadors, the statutes that he requires of us to remain holy and righteous. In fact, we often see the Lord's requirements as burdens rather than to give thanks for each and every statute and requirement that ensures us to be in right standing. The psalmist in this particular verse tells us that he can't even sleep because of his thankfulness is so great. He can't even sleep. He's up at midnight and he he raises up to give thanks to the Lord for those statutes, for those laws, for those things to be called of the Lord, to be called a Christian. We should be giving thanks for those statutes rather than seeing them as burdens. The fact of the matter is remaining authentically and and, and in right motive in terms of our thankfulness can be tricky at times. Truth be told, we can even harbor a misguided, wrong motive thankfulness, giving thanks to the Lord for things that don't even make sense altogether. And we'll see this in our next scripture, that oftentimes we can have a misguided, wrong motive thankfulness. In the book of Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 12, it says this, It says to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. Jesus told this most well-known parable to the Pharisee at the time. He told it to them. And what it truly illustrates is how our thankfulness and wrong motive actually grieve God and doesn't overjoy Him. If we have the wrong motive in our thankfulness, it grieves God and doesn't overjoy Him. The Pharisee takes the opportunity to go up to the temple to pray, if you will, yet his prayer turns into a misguided thankfulness that's actually a display of self-gratification. He says, I thank God that I'm not like this. I'm, I do this and I do that. He notes that he's better than, than, than that, that person who is standing by him even. Even he notes that he's better than many who are around him. He gives thanks to God for that. See, it's not a thankfulness that he's displaying. That's no thankfulness at all. What, it's say, what this is a display of, it's, it's self-gratification and it's truly focused on self rather than what God has done. This Pharisee's so-called prayer of thankfulness is no thankfulness at all. It's of self-gratification. And oftentimes we can find ourselves thinking we are giving thanks unto the Lord, but what we are truly doing is gratifying ourselves. You see, rather than to thank God for all that he has done, the Pharisee takes the time to thank God for who he is not like. 
In fact, if he had a true heart of thankfulness, he would have taken the opportunity and turned to that tax collector and bared the burden alongside of him. It says he prayed alone, alone, when there was a tax collector right there. This man, this Pharisee, who at the time would resemble the pastor, the priest, or whatever you want to want to say, the, the minister, if you will, rather than take the time and turn and reach that person with the word of God, he takes the time to say, I'm better than him. In his misguided thankfulness, the Pharisee is an earshot of a tax collector who at the time was seen as the worst of the worst or being truly sinful. But this tax collector also went up to the temple to pray. And, and he's, he's an earshot of a tax collector who was also carrying a heavy burden of sinfulness. And in this sense of his misguided uh, thankfulness, the Pharisee was creating more shame into an already beaten down, crying out man. Now, isn't that crazy? I thank God I'm better than this. I'm better than that. I, I, I'm not like this. I'm not like that. It, it almost seems like it's a thankful prayer that is void of all action of God himself. Later, Jesus says in the parable that the tax collector left justified and the Pharisee did not. You see, what occurred in that misguided thankfulness that the Pharisee displayed, it actually created distance between him and God rather than draw him closer to God in prayer. And yet the tax collector, who it says in the, in the scripture had beaten down his chest and cried out that he is not worthy, was the one who left justified and not the Pharisee himself. You see, we must be careful to ensure our thankfulness is rightly motivated and set aside our self-gratification and rather thank God for what he's done for us, not for who we are, but what he's done for us. And we need to begin to thank God for who he is, not for who we are. The Pharisee didn't have that ideal solidified, and he didn't embrace that ideal to thank God for who he is, not for who we are. That's something that the Pharisee didn't even do. He didn't thank God for who God was. He's thanking God for who he is not, for who he himself is not. It's a misguided thankfulness, and we can find ourselves into this area when we don't have the thankful heart that says, Lord, I thank you for all things. I thank you for opportunities, rather than to thank God for who we are not like. Jesus always displayed thankfulness with right motive. He always displayed thankfulness and God honoring thankfulness and always did things for the honor or glory in God so that way we, we may be drawn closer to God himself. In the account of the raising of Lazarus, it's more than just a display of the power of Jesus. It's a display of how thankfulness can set up miracles and can set up a ministry based on thankfulness and reliance on God. Because the fact of the matter is, thankfulness shows trust and sets up miracles. Turn your Bibles, if you will, to John chapter 11, verses 41 through 44. It says, so they took away the stone. And then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and his feet were wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Such a miraculous moment, such a miracle-filled moment, and it's all hinged on thankfulness. Jesus opens up with thanking the Father for hearing him in his prayer. He opens up by saying, Father, I thank you for hearing me. He even notes by faith that God always hears, hears him. I know that you always hear me. And he states that what's to occur is for the benefit of the people, and so that way they may believe in Christ. See, it's not look at me, look what I'm doing. It's not, it's not a self-gratifying prayer. What it is, is for the benefit of the people to hear and see a miracle. And it all begins with thankfulness. It's no doubt a far cry from the Pharisee's so-called prayer in the previous parable we just read. It's, it's night and day from the parables, uh, the Pharisee's uh, prayer, if you will. See, Jesus, before this miracle occurs, before he raises Lazarus from the dead, he opens it up by thanking the Father. And we have to catch that. Because if we want miracles to occur, if we want breakthroughs and change to occur, it has to begin with thanking the Father. Thanking the Father. 
Before miracles occur, Jesus always gives thanks. In this case, he gave thanks uh, before Lazarus comes out the tomb. He gives thanks to the Father before Lazarus comes out the tomb. And the miracle of turning the five loaves and two fish, uh, being able to feed 5,000, Jesus gives thanks prior to the multiplication. He breaks the bread and gives thanks prior to the multiplication. And in the blessed action and the Last Supper, when the communion was initiated, Jesus also gives thanks. See, those great and awesome moments, those miracle-filled moments, those, those moments, those critical moments, Jesus always gives thanks prior to anything. Here's the point. Breakthrough, deliverance, and even unending favor and miracles all begin with thankfulness unto the Lord. It all begins with thankfulness. If you're in need of the miraculous, if you have a need for the impossible to be made possible in your current situation, start off, start it all off in motion by giving an authentic, God-centered, God-glorifying, motive, right motive-filled thankfulness unto the Lord. Thankfulness sets it all up. To have that gratitude and to have that thankfulness to say unto Jesus Christ, all things are yours and I trust in you. To be thankful indicates that we are reliant and trustful. But oftentimes situations come upon us and we lose that thankfulness and we begin to worry and have anxiety. But there's an answer for that too in thankfulness. In the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, it says this, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your gifts to God. Present your gifts to God with thanksgiving. No doubt we are all facing or, or have faced situations that cause deep anxiety and worry. Yet in this verse that we just read, we are encouraged not to be anxious about anything, not to worry about anything at all. And it's all possible through prayer, through that true communication and prayer, and moreover by bringing our needs to God and to do it with thanksgiving and to present our needs with thanksgiving giving. And I find that to be truly amazing that we present our need with thanksgiving. And when doing so, what we're saying, when we present our need to the Lord in thanksgiving, we're saying, Lord, I know you're already putting things in action. I know you're already putting things in motion. And I know you're already making a way. You see, prayer that is effective, prayer that moves mountains, and prayer that eradicates worry and anxiety must involve thanksgiving. It must involve thankfulness unto the Lord. So don't worry. Give thanks, rather. Don't harbor anxiety. Give thanks and bring that need unto the Lord. See, we are called to approach the throne of grace and thankfulness rather than anxiety, knowing that we can present all things to Christ, that we can lay it in His hands, and He will answer. Now that's something truly to be thankful for. And thanksgiving to the Lord, as I said, in our prayer and our communication with Him, we are looking forward in faith to the answer even before it comes to pass. That's what thankfulness sets up. I thank you, Lord, that even though it hasn't occurred, that it's on the way. I thank you, Lord, that even though my family hasn't come to church or they're, they're not in the church, if you will, that they're coming, they're on the way. I thank you, Lord, ahead of time. When we give thankfulness in our needs and we give thankfulness in our situations and what we desire from the Lord, what we're saying is that we're looking forward in faith and we're acknowledging that even in the toughest of situation, God is still God and God is still able to change the situation altogether. The fact of the matter is the situations that we face, no matter how difficult they are, no matter what we're going through today, we can always find something to be thankful for. You woke up today. If you're watching this, you're, you definitely have the breath of life within you and that's something truly to be thankful for. We can be somewhere else or, or, or we can be uh, uh, doing something else that, that, is, that is outside of the Lord, but we can be thankful that we are walking in alignment with the Holy Spirit and serving the Lord. There is something that we can always be thankful for. Get rid of the anxieties. Get rid of the worry. Don't worry about anything, but be thankful to God knowing that He's going to show up and He's going to set up the miraculous in your life. And the fact of the matter is, our salvation our deliverance, our freedom. We were saved in order to give thanks. In the book of Psalm 106, verse 47, it says this, Save us, Lord our God, and gather us from the nations that we may give thanks 
to your holy name and glory in your praise. Save us so that we may give thanks. See, we've been delivered, set free, and gathered from the grasp of the enemy. By the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we were gathered from the grasp of the enemy. By the hands of the Lord, we were gathered from the enemy's hands. It was not by our own accord, by our own strength, by through, but through the sacrifice of Christ alone. We only have that freedom because of Christ alone. And the truth is we have been saved. We have freedom now, and it should never be taken for granted, but must be met with thanks unto the Lord. For we have been saved to give him glory, thanks, and praise. The verse said it right there. Save us, Lord, and gather us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name. The Lord has gathered us from some difficult situations, from some difficult places, and he continues to do so this very day. And we need to give him thanks for that very, that very action. I don't know about you, but I've been delivered and set free and, and have the freedom from some terrible situations. And if I wasn't thankful for the Lord in those situations, what I'm saying that then is that it's on my own. It's by my own strength. But the fact of the matter is we cannot save ourselves. We've been saved by the Lord and we've been saved so that way we may give thanks to his name and hold glory and praise only in his name. He saved you and I. He gathered us even together this holiday to take the time and solidify the will of God in our lives. As we gather around our Thanksgiving feast this, this, uh, this Thanksgiving, it's a time that we can solidify the will of God that requires us giving thanks to Him. It's a time that we can seek to be thankful, not just for who we are, aren't rather, but for who He is. It's a time to have that right motive of thankfulness, to thank God for who He is. And if you need miracles and deliverance, set it up today by prayer and giving thanks. And by prayer and giving thanks, even if it's at the dinner table especially before your feast of Thanksgiving today, or tomorrow rather. Give thanks. Give thanks, knowing the miracles are already being set up in your life. And lay down worry, anxieties, and give thanks, knowing that the Lord will come through. And yet most importantly, give thanks for you and I have a Lord and Savior who has saved us from so much and has delivered us and set us free from many things and will continue to do so because of his unending love for each and every one of us. Let us pray. Father God, we love you, Lord Jesus Christ, and we give you thanks this very day that you, Lord Jesus Christ, have delivered us, that you, Lord, have solidified your will for us to give thanks in all circumstances. And most importantly, Lord, we give you thanks because you have saved us saved us from so much, delivered us from so much, and granted us freedom from the bondage that overtook us. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the miracles that are about to occur. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that anxiety and worry is eradicated. And we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, looking forward, looking forward and thanking you ahead of time for what you are going to do in our lives. Lord, we love you. We love you. And we glory and honor your name in this day, Lord, in this day, we truly give you thanks and thankfulness in your most holy name, the mighty name of Jesus, whom we are thankful for. We say amen and amen. And tonight's altar moment, take some time to give the Lord thanks for what he's brought you through, to give the Lord thanks for how he continues to show up in your life. And if you're going through a difficult situation, Open up your prayer tonight by giving thanks, even in a difficult situation, knowing that the Lord will show up. As we mentioned before, before miracles occurred, Jesus always gave thanks. And oftentimes we just bring the need without giving the thanks. And I believe that if you, during this altar moment, if you need a miracle, if you give thanks unto the Lord in your prayer and your petition and your communication with Him, it will create a re rejoicing always. It will create a praying continually and you'll be able to give thanks no matter what circumstance occurs. I pray that your Thanksgiving holiday with your family today is blessed. And I pray that you take the time during your prayers, even before the meal especially, 
to give thanks unto the Lord for all that he has done for you, for your family, for the body of Christ, and take the opportunity, take the opportunity, if you will, to give him thanks because he's truly saved you. He's truly saved you and delivered you and I so much. Let us pray. The show is sad. Show